All right, so we're talking quarterbacks, and we have a distinguished panel joining us. First up, we have Coach Ron Veal, private quarterbacks coach and tutor, worked with some of the biggest names in the position, including a couple of the guys we're going to be talking about in just a few moments. We've got Dave Archer, you all know him from the Falcons Radio Network, played six seasons of quarterback in the NFL, including with the Falcons, and Rusty Manziel, 24-7 sports, going to be giving us some insight on our homegrown quarterbacks of which there are quite a few. Now, one of those guys, of course, Cartersville's own Trevor Lawrence. Coach Veal, you've been working with him forever, but we're keeping this Falcons focused, and Trevor's already shopping for homes in Jacksonville. Probably going number one overall. Same goes for Zach Wilson out of BYU. Going to be on back pages everywhere soon, as it seems the Jets have zeroed in on him. This is where things get interesting. Let's talk about the quarterbacks the Falcons may consider, and we'll start with Justin Fields out of Ohio State, Harrison High School, played a year at UGA. And Ron, we'll start with you, another guy that you've coached. What kind of quarterback is Justin Fields? Justin has the full package, being from being able to throw from the pocket, being able to escape the pocket and make plays, make slaves with his legs when he has to, super accurate, make all the throws intermediate, short, and he's working on the play action game. So great person on and off the field. I think he's the all around quarterback. The only thing that I see from, from Justin Fields is moving through progressions a little bit quicker, but this kid fits exactly what Arthur Smith would like to do from a versatility of the quarterback, either moving or staying in the pocket. Well, I live in Rome, so I'm very close to that Rome staff. It was the first game of that junior season when they ultimately won the state championship. They called me on the way home that night. They said, do you know anything about this Harrison quarterback? I said, I know a little bit. They said, you better go check this kid out. So I go watch him play Dalton, first play of the game. Justin Fields goes 80 yards and it's kind of the rest is history. Ron, let me throw one more Justin Fields question at you because there have been some reports from those anonymous scouts about whether it's his work ethic, his passion. What do you think when you hear those reports about a guy you know so well? I work with a kid. This is the same kid that wake up at seven o'clock in the morning, do a session before school, go to school, go to practice, and we'll do it two times a really week. Like it's always think. about the work with him. And I, I was in California with him for eight weeks, and I saw him work out there, stay in work, watching film, studying film, working on his footwork, working on his play action game. I've seen all these things in person, but like I say, those evaluators have their opinion, and that's the opinion that they get, that somebody has fed them. Anybody that has any doubts about Justin Fields' passion for the game, pick up the Clemson tape after he takes the shot from Skalski in the middle of the field. Goes to the sideline, can barely breathe, and then comes out, comes back, and like throws three deep dimes for touchdowns to beat Clemson in the semifinal. If there's any question about Justin Fields' heart or his passion for the game, I think that probably should be checked at the door after that performance against Clemson. Well, for the Falcons to have a chance to draft Justin Fields, it's going to depend on what the 49ers do at number three. And there's a lot of reporting that Kyle Shanahan is leaning towards Mac Jones, the former Alabama quarterback. We're going to start with you, Arch, on this one. Why might Kyle Shanahan, a guy you know well from his time as the Falcons offensive coordinator, what might he see in Mac Jones? Well, he sees similarity. Kurt Cousins, who he worked with with the Redskins. Matt Ryan, who he worked with here in Atlanta, who are guys that are very good off play action, have the ability to disguise the ball. Now a little bit limited from an athletic standpoint, but are athletic enough to do the stretch game where you come out and bootleg out the backside. He's extremely accurate with the football, and he really does a good job in pre-snap look to understand what's going to happen before he takes the ball from center. Coming out of that system in Alabama, you know, he's playing a pro-style system. And like uh, Dave was talking about, he's able to play the game off the play action as well, continue to make his progression reads. Like you said, limited on his athletic ability, but he makes up for it by making the read through the progressions, getting the ball out of his hands quickly. And um, he's athletic enough to get away or make a move in the pocket to make the secondary throw. Well, the final quarterback in what's seen as that top tier group of QBs is Trey Lance out of North Dakota State. And maybe the guy that the average fan knows the least about, only played one full season at North Dakota State, played just one game this last year. Coach Veal, should Falcons fans be excited about his potential? I feel like the kid is a complete quarterback. He's able to threaten you with his legs. He makes great decisions from the pocket. He can make every throw. And the biggest thing is he's young and he has time to develop into an NFL quarterback. He reminds me a little bit in throwing motion of Randall Cuttingham. And it would take a little while to unwind, but when it unwound, it came out of there and got to its destination on time. And, and finally, if the Falcons go a different direction in the first round, there are several possibilities at the top of the second round. You got Kyle Trask from Florida. You got Kellen Mond from Texas A&M. And Rusty, I want to bring you in to talk about Davis Mills 
out of Stanford and Greater Atlanta Christian. Don't forget, Davis Mills on 24-7 Sports listed as the number one rated pro-style quarterback in his class ahead of Jake Fromm, ahead of Mac Jones in that class. I think what really popped for Davis Mills is when he worked out, and people are like, wait a minute, is this a 4'6 kid? And he has that Georgia, state of Georgia, they call it that dog mentality. You got to be the guy, you got to be the alpha quarterback. Davis Mills has got a lot of that to him. Dave and Coach Veal, we just heard about Davis Mills. Is there a quarterback that intrigues you that probably be around after the first round, whether it's Mills, Trask, or someone else? Arch, we'll start with you. I think the guy that jumps off the tape at me is Kyle Trask, the big kid from Florida. Had a really good year this last year. He had a tremendous core of receivers around him. We're going to see them all come out in the draft. But I had a chance to call the SEC championship game on radio, and I had not seen him in person. I've just seen him on TV. The ball explodes out of his hand. He can make all the throws. Now, limited a bit athletically, but he can drop and throw the ball with the best of them. I think Kellen Marn out of uh, Texas a and I think his stock went up as well from his pro day. He played in a Jumbo Fisher offense. That means he knows offense. He knows defense. He knows coverages. He knows fronts. From what Jimbo says, he's like one of the best kids he's ever had a coach at the position for us, like the ability to recognize coverages and fronts and how they tie together. So I think he, he's athletic enough and he played in a pretty good pro style system. I think he's one of the sleepers in the draft. It is a quarterback rich draft for sure. Falcons have a lot of options if they want to add some competition to their room or think about the eventual successor to Matt Ryan. Guys, thank you very much. Coach Ron Veal, Dave Archer, Rusty Manziel. Guys, enjoy the draft. Thanks, right, man. Thank you. Mm -hmm.